What's up guys? So, I have, for the time being, bored my brother's Arduino. Uh, turns out he had an Arduino too. And I have realized um, what fried this Arduino. Um, and it was a very stupid mistake that I made. And that was I connected the battery to the 5 volts pin rather than the VN pin. Um, needless to say that ended up while frying the damn Arduino. Uh, very stupid mistake and definitely I will not make in the future. I, I wasn't really thinking. Well, I thought it would, like, what could possibly go wrong? And it went wrong, so. That's that. So I have a, my brother's Arduino, which is working perfectly fine. And I'm gonna showcase, well, this thing moving now. And another little thing that I, um, changed was it turns out that um which ones is it these two joints here apparently because they're flipped uh, compared to the two joints that are on this side on the right side because the left joints are actually flipped they rotate the other way so giving a positive angle actually makes them go that way versus giving a positive angle here makes them go that way whereas in unity uh, the way I have it set up, positive angle makes all of them go forward. So that was a little change that I had to make in the actual Arduino code. Um, other than that, this is now working and I'm going to be showcasing it now. So as you can see, the light is, oh my god, it's going to fall now. Okay. So as you can see, the... Well damn. Okay, I'm clicking test again. There we go. Well, that's a little bit better, I guess. You can kind of see the back legs are moving a bit more together, trying to push it forward. You know, if I only had more servos, like I four more servos, I could have put another joint here, and that way they could have done like you know like a normal walking step kind of thing. But with this, it's always gonna be like one servo is like it's always gonna be a servo that's dragging on the ground, causing friction. Let me stop this and put another brain into it. Stop test. So basically in my Unity project, I have a whole bunch of brains that have already been trained. Um, I'm not sure if I showed number four or like one of the other ones, but I'm just going to switch. I'm going to delete this old brain because, so the actual file is, re is reading this thing here, this brain.txt, because that's the, um, that's where the link is to. So I'm going to delete this and I am going to repaste in brain three. And change it to brain.txt. So now, so now when I start the Bluetooth here in Java, it's actually going to try to load up this brain.txt, which is technically brain underscore three. All right, time to test brain three. I might have to decrease the delay in the actual Arduino file for each of these joints. I think I've set them a bit high. It's around 100 milliseconds, which is, I think, way too high. The only delay issues I have to add is actually in the... I have to add more delay in the actual Unity file because... Um, just because Unity's joints and physics is just so shit that it takes... Like for whatever reason, it takes a little while for the joints to get to their proper location, so I have to wait for them to get to that proper location. So to mimic that, I actually increased the delay here too. But I don't think I should have done that. But it's moving forward. It's just moving forward ever so slowly. So let me increase, oh sorry, decrease that delay and see what it looks like then. So it seems that I did already lower the delay to 50 milliseconds. Previously, it was 15 milliseconds, you can see here. So maybe if I drop this down to even lower, like 25 milliseconds, it should be better. 
Actually, let me drop it down to 20 milliseconds. You can actually see here the data count 1 and data count 2. It's actually um, multiplying the effect, which is the rotation of the actual servo by a negative value, by negative 1, just to get them to move to the opposite, opposite way. Um, because the back left and the front left um, servos are actually rotate in the opposite directions. So when they get a data, basically just a value from um, the brain, which is some Java side here, right? When they get that a a value, they basically multiply it by negative one just to get them to move in the correct direction. That was a very simple fix. So now hopefully this will um, get the robot to move a little bit better. Okay, time to test with the new um, changes. All right, it's moving, you can see, considerably quicker now. The joints are moving considerably quicker. It's certainly skidding along forward. Maybe I should try out a different brain. This one is okay. It just rotates a bit too much compared to going forward. All right, this is brain underscore one. Yeah, this one is, not sure why I didn't show this one first. I mean, I guess best for last, really. It's not really the best. I could have spent considerable longer amount of time training it, but if it's one thing you guys know about this channel, I'm lazy. No, just kidding. Don't, uh, don't, don't take that too seriously. But I am lazy. You guys can actually see a trait that I was constantly going for with all all of the brains, and that was actually the back legs being very active compared to the front legs. Whoa, what is this robot thing all spazzy now? And so the back legs tend to like kind of like push more compared to the front legs because I was constantly just looking from this angle uh, when I was training them in Unity. It's pretty cool. It's moved like from here to there. Not bad. The training process has completely also changed now and it's a bit more involving with the user so first thing I'm going to do is press the G button which actually generates a, a generation so I'm going to press G and there you go so now 40 creatures have just spawned and they're all going through their um, training process right now and my goal is basically to see creatures that I think are moving in uh, in, a, in a fashion where they represent real life walking, you know, or at least it would help the robot in real life move, considering the fact that the friction environments here compared to, you know, me training it on a, me testing it on a table is, are different. So, um, you know, I'm just going to see creatures that are moving decently, you know, see, uh, I can see that this creature isn't moving um, his back right leg um, as much as I want but I'm still gonna you know increase its fitness so the way I can choose to put it into the next generation is quite literally I just move him further so that means now this creature will definitely be in the next generation whoa this guy so so he's able to get this far all by himself so that's a pretty decent brain um, has a pretty decent left a uh, left back leg activation I'm gonna move him forward. So that's kind of the idea. And creatures that I think kind of suck or really shouldn't be in the spot or, or there's some they're taking advantage of some bug. So previously I didn't have control over this. You know, if a creature learned to walk by just jittering, you know, taking advantage of some bug, then that creature ended up having a very high fitness, whereas I don't want that. Me also looking at this and, and doing testing, I guess in a sense, you know, I can punish the creature that I think don't deserve to move into the next generation so like these guys here go away right so that's kind of the idea and once I'm done I press G and so that will generate a new generation 
Okay. So that's what ends up happening. So this is basically the training process. Um, similarly, the last five creatures here, one, two, three, four, five, these guys are actually, they're moving backwards, what the hell? Um, uh, I have no idea what just happened, but uh, they might have gotten bad mutations, that's my best guess, but these five creatures are just mutated copies of the best creature in the last generation. The best creature in the last generation is probably somewhere here, I'm not sure, maybe it's this guy. I think I'll just make like a time lapse video now of me training them so you can see how long it might take. So now I'm going to be showcasing when one of the legs is disabled. <clears throat> you can see that this leg is actually still rotating, it's just that I have um, made it extremely tiny to the point where it's it, it wouldn't do anything. It doesn't help um, in, in helping the robot move forward. Um, so this is the same brain that we just trained, it's just that now it's applied to every single creature because I made it so that um, uh, if a brain.txt is saved, it actually loads the brain in the initial generation in every single creature, so it doesn't even matter. All of them have the same brain, so I'm just going to move this guy forward. Because I don't want to waste my time training again, like, you know, from, from the scratch. I might as well use an existing working neural network. So now I'm going to press G. Okay, we're now on a new generation. So you can see there are some variations now. Um, I don't particularly, I'm just going to leave them running. So now I can, so now I can just go through that same process of training them again, but only moving forward, um, um, creatures that I think that have the ability to walk the furthest. So I'm going to move this guy forward. So when I think that I found a pretty decent brain, I'm just going to move that creature forward the furthest. So now that is saved, and now let's try that out in, in the real life robot. I disabled the front right um, joint. That would be, so to kind of disable it here, I would just unplug, well, the joint that powers the front left, front right, sorry, joint, which is this black wire, okay. And I'm just going to extend the joint completely forward. Okay, perfect. Now it is disabled. Now I can go and run the brain that was just trained to be able to, you know, walk forward if the front right um, was disabled. Let's see if it can actually move forward or not. It's moving forward slowly. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Um, this was really just a one-off project. Um, the robot was kind of just sitting on my desk for like the longest time, and I just thought it would be kind of cool if I could, you know, automate some part of the training process just to make it, you know, easier. Or at least, you know, I would have, I, I learned something new. If I want to use this knowledge in some project in the future, it would be kind of cool. I'm probably going to start working on Elsys now, or another evolution simulator of some kind. Um, actually, I'm kind of interested to know how many of you guys would actually like some kind of a tutorial on how to write, you know, a program, one of these evolving neural networks. You know, I could definitely do something like that, that, you know, that would help you guys learn you know, these concepts, since I've been getting some messages on, you know, how you could program neural networks, they're really easy, it's not difficult at all, I don't know why people think this is difficult, it really isn't, if you know basic programming and basic how to deal with matrices in literally any programming language, you can do this, so, 
anyways if you're interested in that kind of a uh, video thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video